Welcome to another Light for the Journey. We're glad that you're tuning in with us. We have got a couple, uh, I see about three people have just popped on right now. It's good to have Larry with us and Katie. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, if you're brand new uh, to this, this ministry, um, go to the link you see here. If you're getting on YouTube, you can go to that link, discoveroakills.com. And join us in the chat. You can ask questions. You can participate. To be honest with you, last week, a lot of the participation I used in my message today is really cool. But we would love to have you be a part of the program. This is an interactive uh, program. We um, try to get it to where it's relatively, uh, it's not real time yet, Terry. You know, when we, <laughs> when we get the, the, the funds for, for real time, you know, we'll, we'll know we have arrived. But we're glad that you're with us. It's Life for the Journey is where we take a look at uh, real life uh, through the lens of Scripture. Tonight, we're going to talk some more about the Holy Spirit, but I would like to make our focus on uh, the question for us is, is what gift, what gift did uh, the Holy Spirit give to you as a believer when you became a believer? God, the Holy Spirit gives gifts. That's one of the things that he does. And how do you employ it? And, you know, how do you use it? And uh, I'm sure there are, there are multiple gifts, but we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, it's good to be with you. If you're getting on for the first time and you're watching us on YouTube, we'd love it if you'd subscribe and you'll get notices when we go live. We go live every Sunday night at 7 Central um, Central Time. That's, that would be 8 Eastern Time. I used to live on the Eastern Time Zone. Anyhow, it's good to have you, Terry. With me is Terry, uh, Terry Husser. Behind the behind this, producing everything, she's she's the one that keeps everything going. Here is Linda, his lovely his lovely bride of more than forty years, right? Seventy three was the year we were married. Okay. So what is that? Forty four. Forty four. Yeah, yeah, we were talking earlier this week that she's a keeper. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. So we're we're glad that you've joined joined in with us, um, Terry. Tonight, you know, I always have you start out. Uh, I've been preaching a series on on God, the Holy Spirit, and walking with God. This whole concept of walking with God, uh, kind of thing. You listened to the message today. Um, any anything you would have added, or any thoughts, or anything that you're stepping away with? Um, what did you think of the message? Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Excellent message. Okay. Now we're past that. You got that. You <laughs> <laughs> got that. Um, well, you got more next week. Yes, I have and way uh, more coming next yeah. week. Yeah. So. Actually, there's three more three more messages. We, we dealt with, uh, for our audience, um, I preached the, the first, uh, this is going to be, I think, a six-week series. The, the first one, you know, um, who is the Holy Spirit? In fact, that he is the third person of God and how, why that's so significantly important. I mean, actually, it's huge. I don't think most people realize that. The, the other, uh, the second one was is when do we get the Holy Spirit, which was pretty important, and that was last week. And this week, just, just talking about um, the message for this week was being enlightened by the Holy Spirit or, or actually, you know, just being led, what, mm -hmm. what, what that looks like. And uh, we, we came out of the Ephesian uh, letter, chapter 5 of, of Ephesians. Um, and <clears throat> so next week, um, the baptism of the Spirit, and that's in some denominations, those circles. Um, ours would be, we would, it, it's really syntax. It's, it's different words for the same process. Different churches use different di different denominations use different wording, but uh, entire sanctification or the sanctifying process of God the Holy Spirit. Um, I think the week following that will be uh, I'll be preaching on um, the gifts of uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and then I want to wrap up the series um, I believe with uh, the fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. and uh, what is that? What what it looks like? What it you know what it's a it's a result of so really really excited about this and uh, um, God God was just speaking to me about how important it is to help people solidify the work of God the Holy Spirit in our lives yeah. and um, I said I said to <coughs> Debbie <coughs> I said to Debbie earlier this uh, uh, today I said I, I I am hoping that it's starting to to come out in the series um, that one of the most important things um, that we have in uh, by, by having God the Holy Spirit is the transforming work 
that God wants to do in, in our inner being. Um, you know, it, it outweighs all the gifts. But tonight, I want to talk about gifts. But it outweighs all the gifts. It is, um, you know, the whole point of Pentecost is, is that the Holy Spirit would come upon the church and that um, <clears throat> we as believers, way past Pentecost now, but we as believers receiving the Holy Spirit um, in our new birth. And that kind of thing. So, just um, just sharing that, and um, so you know th that's where we are. Come on in, have a seat. You <laughs> have a seat, Leslie. Um, so just just talking about about those things. And so tonight, wanted to to just um, you know ask you ab about your gifting. What is your some of your gifts? You know, and how do you employ them? Well, there's there could be a little confusion there because. A lot of the churches, probably most of them that we're, you know, working with here or people that are watching, they have what they call the motivational gifts that a lot of times in churches, they help you identify the giftings that you okay. operate in. Um, I guess if you were supposed to say, kind of pare it down to say the gifts of the spirit and I think it's more of a motivational prophetic and, and stuff like that is more of a, a motivational gift and stuff. But that and teaching were two that I was told that I was stronger okay. in. But I think that's not like the gifts of the spirit. Uh, okay. It's not. It's not exactly the same. Okay. You. Like, but, but God has has gift has gifted you to do what in the church then. To motivate people, to motivate no, um, probably to... more teaching, more okay. more teaching, and <clears throat> and I would agree with that. Okay, yeah. there's there's a huge one that you're you're leaving off. <clears throat> you do it every week. You use it every week. He's giving me the deer <laughs> deer in the headlights kind of look. <laughs> what do you you stand up front? In, do it in, every in, week in the worship. Yeah, Pray, praise yeah, and worship. Yeah, but you sing. You have see, I don't. I look at myself as a supporter in that. I've seen so many people that I consider to be more outstanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in, in 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 leading, where you know, just to watch them. You know. Okay. It's it's more inspirational. <laughs> you know, I consider there, myself more in a support role as far as so the, the so worship. you 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 when you look at this stuff you you're not looking at it as as much and I bet a lot of people it's good that we're talking about this I bet a lot of people do that they don't see you know how God has gifted them or that they just think this is just kind of I'm just supporting I'm just and by mm -hmm. the way that is one of your gifts the gift of gift of of encouragement or support right. Okay, I you come along. You're that. you're yeah. always helping support me in in ministries, and you you come along and and encourage, in the sense that you're there for support. For for example, uh, folks, uh, this we're we're remodeling the church, and this week you you, you showed up a couple times. Um, we <clears throat> we got into all kinds of trouble together. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun, right? Right. But but you 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 mostly do this a b or a because you love Jesus, you love the church. But you also love me, and you want to support mm -hmm. me, and and I get that, you know. And I think I think there is, and if you if you watch Terry, in the church, there are a lot of times when he comes and prays for others. There's another gift that you have, mm -hmm. um, a gift for praying uh, for others. You also have, I, don't, I bet you don't think of it this way, but but you, you're pretty evangelistic. I I know it's not your comfort zone. But you have this between you and your wife. It's just kind of a co, a co gifting of it. Um, so enough about you. You're on the hot <laughs> spot, right? You're on the hot spot. Um, let's let's throw up the scriptures. Let's go there, and then we're. In, I'm going to ask you what what you what gifts you see that I have. This is about spiritual gifts, and I just want to read this. Not concerning spiritual gifts, uh, brothers. I do not want you to be uh, uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to, to mute idols, however um, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is a curse, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, here, here's the key four verses that I really want us to get. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And that's capitalized, by the way, referring to the Holy Spirit. 
there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but the same God who empowers them uh, all in everyone. Now, you're catching on this. But you, you pretty much described this, by the way, uh, Terry. And to each is given a, the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And I wanted to stop there. Um, he goes on and, and talks about how they work and what's in some of the gifts that were given mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um, we'll, we'll let some of our viewers, I need to reconnect this so I can keep up. Uh, we'll let some of our viewers share some of their, their gifting. But let's, let's, let's flip this around, okay? But you're still on the hospital. I love how I can do that. You're still going to be on the hospital. <laughs> what, what are some of my gifts that you see? How you like that? <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know what you'd call that. Well, I do it every Sunday. I know, but I don't know with, with, with the proper title. Preaching. But, but Yeah, but I mean, you do it in such a way that it's just so easy to, uh, the communication, the, the ab you know, being able to... Uh, oh. Yeah. Hey, Leslie, you can turn that screen around and watch what's going on. Um, we we have to, a guest in the studio. Just to put it all together the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage. Yeah. yeah. You can take that screen and turn it towards you right there, bud. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. Encouraging. Leslie's over here. He's writing notes, encouraging. By right. the way, we have Leslie with us. Do you want to join us? Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't want to join us. Um, another pastor's in, in the studio with us. Um, was um, one one of the people who's a part of my ministry in another in another church that was seems like a long time ago, Leslie. So okay, preaching, preaching, encouraging. Well, there's preaching, but then there's just the way that you do it, the way that you can bring a message across and make it simple and easy for everyone to understand. And it in it yeah, and it is encouraging, and a way even when there's other issues that need to be dealt with. You're just so gifted in the way that you could take a, a subject or something that would be kind of difficult or uncomfortable to work with, and yet you have such an awesome way of doing it. <laughs> well, okay, in, in gentle, in a gentle, just non-threatening way. It's it's an awesome, awesome wow. gift. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't want to guilt people into receiving the right. Lord. I want to I want to lead people to Christ, and there's a big difference. Um, Larry says, um, we just want to look at, at some of the. Larry said, God gave me the ability to meet people where they are in life. Okay, that's that's cool, and and just kind of then then you you as far as meeting where they are in life, and then encouraging them, helping them, leading them to Christ, letting your light shine. Give me a little more parameter there, Larry, just kind of how God uses you. I mean, how you employ that. Katie says, glad to see and hear that Pastor Leslie made it safely. There, there we go. Yes, he's here with us. He's, he's hiding behind with, with uh, Linda back there behind all the cameras. Um, so here, here's the interesting, and I really want our audience to catch this. For five years, five years, I told God, you got the wrong man. <laughs> You know, um, I, I didn't see that. I couldn't see that. I mean, God obviously knew in God, the Holy Spirit, and I debated, which, and I'm saying this, folks, because I really, um, I, I really get, am guessing that um, a lot of us, a lot of us are that way. <laughs> Leslie's over there smiling. Um, I, I, I really should have you bring a stool in and set you in here. Leslie said to me, he said, don't you, and he shook his, I remember you shaking his finger out, don't you ever think I'm going to be a preacher? And now mm -hmm. he's pastoring in a church and preaching well, every week. But, but you know, I think, I think a lot of us do that. You know, we just don't see the gift right out of the gate, if you will, and in the church and how we can be used. We're, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, I, I mean, that should be encouraging to people though. But, but I said no for five years. Yeah. But the reason you said you've got the wrong man is we have our own view of, of what we've seen as far as a pastor and leaders in the church in the past. So that's what we model. That's our model that we assume, well, I'm certainly not that way. And that's what we think. Well, I'm not that way, so I'm not, I'm not a pastor or I'm not a leader in that sense. Now... If all of those leaders and pastors over all these years that we thought that's what it was all about were all that successful, why are we where we are in America today? 
So maybe... <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're not if as good as we'd had more, more to... people that were thinking like you were, you know, oh. they... You see what I'm saying? Yeah, was... I, yeah. Well, you know what? You know what just struck me, and for for our audience' sake um, as well, and as we are, you know, because the Holy Spirit does give us gifts. We all get mm-hmm. them. We all get them. And in, in fact, I read. I, I was reading there in in uh, the Corinthian letter, the 12th chapter. But if you go to the 14th chapter, the 12th verse, it says is that that we we're given these gifts for the good of the church. Mm-hmm. Okay, to employ them. You know, to, for the, the the discipling process and the making of disciples and the edification of the church to to help us all catch on to this. It's part of what we're doing right now, and the Holy Spirit using um, leading worship a gift. Absolutely, uh, yeah, Absolutely. of course it That's... is. Um, it, it 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 really is. It's it's huge. In fact, um, I count on that um, for our church. Debbie is for those who don't know. Um, who may be viewing in, Debbie is our worship leader. And, and I happen to know that tonight, well, maybe not because Leslie's gonna stay with us tonight, but but normally on Sunday night, she's already thinking about next Sunday. Mm-hmm. And she's already begun to pray about and doing that. Um, yeah, Katie does that in her church as well. That is one of the most- <laughs> it, Is it very important? Next to preaching? Yeah. I mean, setting that spiritual atmosphere it's so incredibly important. Back back to what you were saying, and I want to share this with the audience because I think it's I think it would be encouraging. By the way, there it comes again, encouraging. I have a couple other gifts um, as well that I know that God has given me counseling, uh, which has a lot more to do with listening and mm-hmm. active listening. I know when to ask questions. I know how to probe to help me understand so I can help folks that kind of thing. But um, to to our guests. Um, the thought that as you were talking about, you know, as you were talking about this and we look at, at the role models of, of like preachers, mm-hmm. okay, and people who have gifts and we were kind of looking at them and thinking, well, that's it, then I'll never, could, it, could, it, be, could, it, could it be that the enemy, Satan, who works against the church all the time, is slipping in and wants us to actually do that very thing, to compare ourselves to whoever's, yep. instead of being ourselves and be, and taking and laying hold of the Disqualify gifts. Disqualify ourselves because we're not like this other, yeah. other person. Yeah. And God's thinking, um, you are exactly, I need people that can go out there and relate to and impact other people. Yeah. So you got all these people just disqualifying themselves because they don't look like this other person and don't act like this other person and stuff. And I think God just sits there sometimes with his hands in his head, just weeping, thinking, you know, who can touch these people? And, and it brings me right back to what, what um, Larry was saying, you know, his gift to, and I'm, I'm still waiting, Larry, to, to hear back some more. I'd like, to, I'd like you to flush that out a little bit for me. Tell me about that gift, what you do with it, how God uses it. Um, the Corinthians did that. My gift is better. Oh yeah, you know some. <laughs> and yeah, they did do that. They, you know, I mean, just the opposite on the opposite side of that. So tonight, the again is is what what gift did God give you, and how do you employ it? And uh, we've kind of we've kind of started it off here. Um, oh my goodness, <laughs> we only have ten minutes left. But 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 I really love to hear from you guys. What what gift you have, and how God and how God. Um, is using you and employing your gifts to help others and to lead others and to build the church. Um, so, yeah. I think, you know, when you were talking about, you know, shining the light on Vicki and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, as God deals with those areas, you know, you painted a nice picture there with the, with the rocks and the issues and every, we all have our issues and stuff and God deals with them real gradually. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, some of them he drills with. It's amazing. I haven't said this. I didn't say this, but some things God takes care of the, the day of our conversion. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he sometimes, did, he, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. But, he can. but generally speaking, as we learn more of the Word and get more of God in us through studying His Word and, and pursuing Him, and as He gently you know, works with us and everything, I believe that those gifts. You know, like you might originally start out strong in one area, but I believe the longer you seek the Lord and yield to him and desire what he's got, 
you get more and more gifts. They, they even out, so to speak, instead of being like really strong, just in maybe one or, or two Or you become areas. more balanced is what Yes, you... where, where he's continuing to do a work. And as long as you're, you know, teachable well, and, and wanting to seek God, I believe that they get more balanced out and stronger and stronger. And and yet there are there are some core parts of our gifts that are our main in in the other. Right. But you you're absolutely right. Kay says um, uh, church publications a gift because <laughs> I do that too. Yes, Katie, to be ability to write that kind of thing. Uh, are gifts always something you already know? I think we would like that, but God wants us to come as we are and be willing and open to do anything He wants us to do. Yeah, Leon. Um, that's a that's a, a good question. I don't I, think, I think so. Yeah, when, when you know, part of my saying, "No, God, I can't do that for five years." Um, you know, in this in the starting in the starting getting into ministry, Leon, um, I didn't see myself. Uh, Debbie and I started out with with youth, and I, you know, I figured if I did any kind of ministry, it would be as a layperson and in youth. And then when, when God had his thumb in my back about being a pastor, I was sure I'd be in youth ministry. You know, mm -hmm. there's no way I can do that. And, and I didn't see it in me. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that or, or working with youth. And it seems like God has just blessed and has taught me a, a lot of stuff. But that's a great question. And um, I, I think, Leon, a lot of the gifts that we have, we don't know. Um, part of it is because of what 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 Terry is just saying, the the parable, the talents is really kind of all about this. Terry, mm -hmm. him, who, you know, who's faithful with a few, giving me even more. Now, gifting, responsibility, works of service, all, all that stuff plays in. But but God, the Holy Spirit's got His hand in the direction of all of it. That's 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 the point. Being led by the Spirit. That's what I'm mm -hmm. preaching about. Being led by the Spirit. But great question. What does Debbie say? No, you can learn to do different things outside of our giftedness like i had to get over being shy and learn to talk to people at church yeah she really is hyper shy mm -hmm. you know <laughs> i always was too uh really oh always i'd hide <laughs> you, when, you'd when like i was a hide. little kid i'd hide yeah <laughs> when, i didn't when, when company came you would yes hide? absolutely <laughs> i was gone <laughs> but here again is why it is so important you know, to have different people in the ministry and stuff, because if you'd have told me even five years ago that I'd be like sitting here doing this with you, uh -huh. I'd have laughed at you, you know. <laughs> but if there isn't somebody that can influence you or impact you, you'd go through your whole life never having any gifts. Yeah. Not, I shouldn't say not having the gifts, never discovering those gifts. Or employing because them. Because it's other people yeah. that will help you, and God will use other people to help you to discover that you even have a gift or to help you build the confidence that you can do something. That's why, you know, they call it iron sharpens iron or like coals have to be together to get each other going. Uh -huh. But everybody... That there's well, that old well, saying we, that you see it all the time. God doesn't make any garbage, <laughs> and He doesn't. We, we are the church, and and the the longer I, I pastor, the longer I, I do ministry, and actually the longer I live, the the more I am convinced that God has made us uh, depend interdependent Absolutely. on each other. I need you. I need Linda. I need Leslie who who's in another church, you know what I mean, but we need we absolutely need one another and God has made it that way that we have to lean on each other and 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 and, and to one he gives this gift. One he gives that I mean that if you finish reading that 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 uh, Corinthian letter, you know, and to another he gives this gift. We aren't all the eyes. He goes on to, to talk about that. I need to back up Linda um okay, nope, that's good. I thought Leon had said something. I had to learn what leading worship entailed it comes naturally but there are still many aspects that are learned from other leaders <laughs> yeah um yeah it, it, there he is development of the gifts i think that's what katie is talking mm -hmm. about you know my gift at preaching for example that has had to develop i've had to learn um my preferred way is give me that yellow legal pad my favorite mm -hmm. way to preach. Give me my Bible, my yellow legal pad. 
but I've had to learn to use PowerPoints and presentations mm -hmm. because I, I realized that I was dealing with, uh, with younger generations who are visual learners and uh, there are certain things, you know, so I've had, you, you hone the gifts and you hone the skills and you use them for the glory of God. And so, yeah, Katie, I think, I think that uh, there is a honing and a developing of our gifts um, that comes with the process as well. I, I think there are, there are, is there a difference between being um, called and a gift? Yeah, yeah, there is, Leon. And Larry, Larry asked, I mean, I'm about to lose my, I need to reconnect. Um, Larry asked, I serve as worship leader, have been uh, staff parish committee chair. Generally, I can relate to most everyone. Okay, you're kind of that, that peacemaker then, Larry, as well. You know, every church needs peacemakers. Uh, we, we, we need them. And uh, Leon, there is, um, there is a difference between uh, being, being called and, uh, and a gift. Um, being called is where God puts his, his finger on, on you and says, I want you to, to do uh, this. I'm asking you to commit your life into this kind of service and it's, it's uh, being called is usually a lifelong commitment. Now, there'll be gifts that go with that. And there are gifts that come with calling. And there are gifts that we use for a lifetime as well. But, but I think, um, when, especially when we look at, at, at pastors, pastors are called. They, they have to be recognized. Part of that, the church lays hands on pastors and recognizes mm -hmm. them in a, a, our denomination. Um, Leon, um, they, we're ordained. Uh, in the Wesleyan Church, um, and and so on and so forth. If you guys will hang with me, I've been told I'm getting a, I'm getting the one minute signal. I'm down to down to a minute. Boy, this is this is fun. This is really fun. <laughs> and there's so <laughs> and much. It always to go goes so fast. We can't get into. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me let me say this. Uh, if you're looking for a church and you're in the Rochester, Minnesota area, you're cold. Uh, we turn on the heat. Okay. Just want you to know that we turn on the heat. We're located 410 28th Street, Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, the congregation is very loving, very kind, and we'd love for you to join us. Um, just this whole thought process, as as I'm, as as this show has progressed, is is that you know God has given us gifts, and 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 sometimes takes others to show. I'm I'm thinking that a lot of us don't realize just how important we are in this in God's scheme of things, and He has empowered you, and He's gifted you with his spirit and abilities to edify the church. Good night.